It started after my parents left for dinner. I had declined the offer to join, hoping to catch up on some college assignments, but I ended up skipping them completely, and they are the furthest thing from my mind. It was an amber alert on my phone, something I rarely find myself concerned with, but this one made me curious. I had been sitting in my old bedroom I used to live in before college, about to do some research when the jarring vibration shook the desk I used as a teen. It simply read, Emergency Alert, Hostile Animal, This Area. 10.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday. Avoid wooded areas, check media. Type, severe. I found this one intriguing indeed. Was there a bear on the loose, or possibly an exotic pet that got free? I'd known of some kids in the city who raised alligators, but in my parents' woods there was nothing but deer, squirrels, and an occasional rabbit. No bears or carnivores of any size lived around here. I didn't think much of it, but the woods were always a bit too dark and unlit for my liking, hence the reason I'd chosen the city when picking my college. My parents' house, by the way, has an abundance of windows. They love light, and I'm sure this is their reason for moving here when we were young. I walked to my window and peered out into the dark evening, observing the barely visible trees shrouded in shadow. A few moths gathered in front of the window pane, but nothing was out there, at least from this angle. For some reason I felt a bit anxious, so I walked over and turned the porch light on to increase visibility just in case. I headed into the kitchen to refill my water, contemplating a sip of whiskey from the liquor cabinet, but changed my mind. I walked over to the front door, next to those two large windows that extend nearly to the door height and turned on the porch lights. I felt some comfort and walked back to the kitchen when I saw something moving in the woods, which started about 10 meters from the sliding kitchen door. I was fairly sure my mind was likely playing tricks on me, but I stared into the wood's edge and was sure I saw movement, slow and awkward. My heart skipped a beat as I turned the porch light on that illuminated the view from the kitchen side door. At the edge of the woods, I saw a barely lit animal. It took me a few seconds to register. It was a deer, but its abdomen looked far too long. It was shivering, or more accurately, lurching in a stagger on swaying stalks of legs. Its wide eyes reflecting the light were too far apart as well, and I realized as it turned its head the eyes seemed nearly two feet apart. The other eye that came into view was nearly half a foot wide as well an oblonged reflector that smeared across its wide unnatural head. Shivers rippled across my neck as I watched it lift and drop the massive deformed head in effort and release, as if unaccustomed to its current state. I figured I'd send my parents a text but noticed it wasn't going through, just hanging on, delivering. I then saw my phone service was on zero bars, which was bizarre as I texted a friend not 20 minutes before. I checked the internet and when I realized that was down I started to worry. I walked over to the television and turned it on, flipping to the local channels where an anchorman glitched and paused as the signal struggled. There was a news ticker on the bottom displaying an alert of massive power outages, and I felt great relief that mine was not affected. I could make out some of the dialogue in between broken words. What I gathered was there were numerous animal attacks, and what I swear he was saying, unexplained deformations. Occasionally, the anchorman's image would blend in the style of a weak signal to confusing photographs. Photographs that took me a few moments to realize were wide, gnarled trees, power lines that tapered into wide mammoth ropes, and dead cattle that were appallingly bloated and pulled, which appeared to have been tampered heavily with a photo editing tool. They were all stretched unnaturally as if the objects were fresh oil paintings that someone had smeared quite hard with the palm of their hand. It looked Dali-esque. And as much as I appreciated his art, the images on screen horrified me. I watched for a few minutes and realized the station was trying to piece things together as well, and the pixelated anchorman froze in place before the signal lost message appeared on screen. I walked back to the kitchen door, relieved to see no sign of the deer, and pulled a butcher knife from the drawer. I slipped my boots on and walked to the front of the house, which faces our neighbor's yard, and peered over at the light of their window, which was no longer the shape I'd see each night as a teenager. It was a long, wavy band of yellow barely visible beyond the pear trees which separated us. I stared at it for a few seconds in awe, and then let out a short shout of terror as I saw the figure staggering out from under the tree. It was so horribly altered that I couldn't tell if it was Mr. or Mrs. Daniels. Wide head and locks of stranded gray ribbon hair dangling over wide slits of nostrils. 
and hot dog shaped watery white eyes. The mouth was a massive hanging horror on the jaws, burdening the bent neck with its current weight. The figure was approaching my house in slow, labored staggers, and I stared, jaw agape, for a few seconds before I could force myself to look away. I checked my phone again, dialing 911 immediately after seeing one bar flickering on and off. I received a busy signal before the call ended prematurely. Signal lost. I opened the front door ready to call out to the figure to see if they were still themselves, but immediately heard the low, vibrating scream, inhuman and choked by whatever caused the face and vocal cords to stretch. I shut the door and locked it and turned off the living room light and watched from around the corner. As they walked into the spotlighting of our exterior lights, I saw the twisted face and massive chest, the enormous left leg, and the widened nails on the impossibly fat fingers on what was once a normal arm. It was Mrs. Daniels, and she walked straight into the long window I now resented my parents for choosing, with a clink of a fat tooth, smearing an absurd amount of saliva on the glass as she wiped her open mouth on it. Her brain had to have been equally deformed, and though not dead, there was nothing I could do for her. The thud from the kitchen door nearly collapsed me. I spun violently to see an elonged deer, at first thinking it was the same one I'd seen earlier, but soon realizing it wasn't. It was deformed as if diagonally, massive tongue dragging out of the horrific, toothy mouth onto the back porch, and one massive antler weighing its cocked heavy head low to the ground. I ran to my room and grabbed my computer and chargers, a comforter and a pillow. I tried to not look at the awful things in the harsh spotlighting, smearing their horrific heads on the windows of either side of the house. I stalled at the television which had frozen on a photo of a jet immersed in the shockwave of a sound barrier being broken, wondering if it was related to the horror unfolding before me. When the loud bang on the living room window left me reeling in agony, I raced to the most interior room of the house by instinct pantry which has no windows. There's a washer and dryer which I switched off in order to hear better. I've been in here a while now in pitch blackness aside from the dim glow of my computer and phone, and I don't expect to move anytime soon. The bathroom is connected to this room, but I'm not sure it's locked, and I'll wait until I'm desperate to check. In the meantime, I've been using the utility sink. It's 11.15 now. I was able to send an email to my parents and friends, but received none back. I only assume it will pass, and I've been making sure to keep silent, but I can't stop shaking after hearing the shattering of windows. Update. There were sounds of scraping limbs all night, and I heard a loud sniffing from the crack under the door on a few occasions. More broken glass scattering under the unseen feet. A few times through the course of the night, the television signal strengthened. I heard the anger man's voice stressing to stay indoors, mentioning an anonymous caller with possible insight. Rumors of an experimental military aircraft, and something about molecular vibration in between the sound clipping out. I still have no phone service, and my parents never returned home. The sunlight has been peeking under the door for a few hours now, but I still hear them. I hear their low, agonized screams, deep and rippled with the vibration of fattened vocal cords. There are bands of moving shadows under the thin wood door protecting me. The door that has a hole from where a distorted antler punched through last night as I squeezed my knees to my chest, holding my breath. As I tight this, I'm shaking, trying not to rattle the laptop. Through the hole, I can see an eye rolling in its socket as if trying to process what it is seeing. I think it's Mrs. Daniels.